Welcome to the Millennial Factor, Tips for Millennials. This is part of our eBit series. Our eBit series are tidbits of e-learning information that allow you to gain knowledge and define steps for moving forward. You can also look for our e-webinars, which are 60 to 90 minutes long, and our e-workshops, which are one day or multiple days of learning. Let's move forward. Having worked with millennials and driving success, first thing that I teach them is to understand the myth. It's important that we each know that if there are things that are being said or beliefs that people have, that we understand it, that at that time we can take actions to overcome. There are beliefs or concerns about millennials. What are they? So many believe that millennials are lazy. Now, personally, I know that there's lazy people in every workforce group, but Millennials are tagged with laziness. Millennials are entitled. There's the belief system out there that millennials believe that just because they've worked at a certain place for a certain length of time, that that entitles them to a pay raise or a promotion. So it's important that millennials understand this. Millennials lack loyalty. And in fact, I heard it said that why should I invest further in a millennial? Because they will jump job to job. And there's a perception out there that millennials will have seven jobs in two years. Next is millennials fear decisions being made behind closed doors. Well, that may be true. So, you know, if that is true, how can a millennial overcome that? Finally, millennials are impatient. They want quick answers. If that's a myth, why is it a myth? And if it's true, why is it true? And what can you as millennial do to overcome this? The second thing that I teach millennials is to define what are some of the realities and embrace the reality. Although many believe reality, here are some facts behind it. Millennials are courageous. In fact, I say they're the most courageous workforce there is. In fact, with them being courageous, I believe and I've seen that I've had to hold millennials back more than push them forward. What this means is, Understand if you're courageous that you might actually need to slow yourself down a little bit to be aware. I call it stop, look, and listen. To stop, look, listen, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what you're being coached and told instead of just racing to the solution. Next is uh, millennials are used to quick information and answers. Well, that's actually true. Millennials grew up in the digital age that other workforce groups like baby boomers, such as myself, did not. However, that may have created the bad habit that millennials are used to quick answers. If you're being coached as a millennial, listen to the coaching. You don't have to race and look for it on Google and therefore cause an argument. Or it, what will happen is you'll stop getting the energy from your manager on coaching you because they see that you're going around them. One, again, is that they appreciate transparency. And that's true. That is why millennials at times maybe uh, don't like closed doors. In other words, transparency is I want to be involved. Uh, what type of decisions are you making? If you do some of the things that we will speak of in the next few slides, you'll increase your participation in that involvement. Millennials want to know the why. In other words, baby boomers such as myself, I did things because I was being paid to do it. It was part of my job description. And sometimes Understanding the why, I do appreciate, but I didn't have to know. Well, understanding the why is important to millennials. You can embrace that and how you communicate that to your employer, though, it is important. Not just saying, I want to know why, to say, if I know why, I think it might help me execute better. Millennials want to know the mission, and I appreciate that. I'm a big mission, vision, and values person, and millennials like to know their reason for existence. So that's important that you understand your company's mission and the corporate values that they live by. And we will utilize that moving forward. Here's one that I always like to attack is about job versus career. It's said that millennials lack loyalty and will jump job to job. That's why sometimes Others, employers may hesitate in investing in the millennial because they'll take it to the next job. Understanding that, you have to show loyalty and that you worked 
the investment. And there's ways in doing that. Uh, I t teach employers that you haven't shown a millennial what a career is, but as a millennial, you have to show that you're looking to understand what a career within this organization could be. And we'll show you how. Part one is ask and understand what the career lattice is within your organization. Some companies may not show a career lattice, but it's there. In other words, what are the other positions within your organization? And a lattice means that you can make lateral moves up and down that are available. And what are the skills and the knowledge that are required for each position? When you understand this, the next step is to take self-accountability for your personal and professional development. If there's you have interest in any of the other roles and you know the knowledge and skills, what can you do for self-development? But also make your supervisor aware because it may be, hey, I want to learn this. How can I learn this? Is there something I could take home? Is there a video I can watch? Is there a person here that I might possibly be cross-trained on? When you show an interest in, on your self-development, and especially when you know it's a career within that organization, you show that you want a career instead of a job. The, the next step, and I mentioned it before, is communication. Define what your goals are, but communicate them. Have a mentor, and your coach, your boss, your superior, your leaders should be your mentors as well. But even ask them, are there others around here that I can learn from? Because the different people that have been here for some time will have the skill sets that you want to learn. It's important that you communicate that you want to grow within the organization and learn. So part of the cold hard fact is that you are not there to make change and drive your initiatives. At the time that you might become in leadership, you'll be asked for helping to make decisions that help guide the corporation. But you have to attain that first. Too many times you go in thinking about how I can change things here instead of how can I make things work better. The better that you embrace the mission and the values of the organization, as well as understand the strategic initiatives, the better you can align your growth skills and knowledge that advance the execution of each. In other words, if you're communicating to your leader and you say, I understand our mission is here, our values and principles are here, our strategic initiatives are these things, what additional skills and knowledge can I learn that will help in my role, outside my role, but possibly take on more responsibility that helps our company succeed in those things, or in our mission, in our values, in our vision, and in our corporate initiatives. The more that you show interest and then show action, the more that I would want to invest in you. And at the time that promotions come around, you would make that an easy choice or be a top candidate. The individuals who take self-accountability for development are the ones that will receive more investment and align themselves for advancement and recognition. Once again, it's not entitlement. It's not how long I've been here. I've been here two years, I deserve a promotion. It's I've been here two years and I've taken self-development uh, or self-accountability for my development and I'm seeking to grow and I've made that known. I'm seeking to help make the company grow in their corporate initiatives, their mission, vision, and their values. It, and as I show that I've succeeded with this execution, I make myself an easy choice for promotion. That's part of the millennial factor, 10 steps to managing millennials to success. With that being said, that's just a brief discussion. If you read the book, The Millennial Factor, at the end of each chapter of the stories, it expands on what you can do as a millennial that helps drive your success. You need to show that you're coachable, that you accept behavior modification, that when you correct it, you listen, you ask good questions, and then you correct your behavior. You know that you should be managed by rewards or consequences. Naturally, we all like the rewards, but there will be consequences. But the quicker that you show that you can change your behavior, we all make mistakes and get back on the reward side, the better that you will align yourself within this organization. Here's a great quote. With technology, people in remote places can suddenly have a say in what's happening to them. 
that was not possible five years ago. I picked this quote because it shows how our industry is changing, how year by year it moves quicker, it changes, and now there's a lot of remote jobs as well as working on the job at, at the location. But be ready and prepare yourself for those changes by aligning with the strategic initiatives. You need your employer to see that you are a good investment. Thank you for attending. We want to thank you for attending. If you'd like to email, our email is mark at markvillareal.com. If you have questions about additional courses, you can send that to contact at markvillareal.com. My website is markvillareal.com. My phone number is listed there. And please subscribe to our YouTube, which this will be posted. But as we create new uh, tidbits or other e-learnings or educational videos, you will be notified as well. So please, thank you very much and have a good day.